Well, hey guys, Tyler here, back for another update on the 40 Breeder. Um, had a couple issues, minor problems that I had to deal with uh, over the course of this week. And uh, I'm sure many of you have probably had the same problem, but I had to remove my float switch. Unfortunately, the pump that I had it hooked on to uh, kept sticking on. Um, obviously, I need to get a relay, but uh, that this scared me quite a bit. Um, I don't have the money right now to go and buy your automatic top-off unit, you know, the ones with the optic eye and the double float switch to protect it. And... Uh, Unfortunately, this thing kicked on one day, and I didn't catch it, and it probably dumped a good, I don't know, three gallons of calc water into the setup, and we all know that that's no good. Um, thank God nothing happened to any of my corals, and uh, I was able to, uh, you know, do a water change and get everything back to normal before it was too late. <sighs> I have to sneeze, but... I guess I'm not going to sneeze. Um, so what I did is I just basically utilized that hole, put in the float switch. Um, I am going to change this out for a plastic bolt. Um, I know that eventually it will probably start rusting. It did in my uh, saltwater tank down in the uh, garage, but it's done now. Um, everything that you see here is all gravity fed so I basically have no pump whatsoever and uh, it kind of gives me a little bit of peace of mind um, yeah float switches can still um, stick I know the one in the garage has been running for probably over a year straight with no problems um, it also has 55 gallons of head pressure above it so maybe that's, you know, maybe that does help not keep it stuck. But uh, I've never had any problems. And another thing I noticed with those uh, float switches, if there's any flow in the tank, it'll even trigger those things to go on. Um, I did have a power head right there. It's off right now. It's just too powerful. But uh, it was moving my uh, float switch and causing it to stay kicked on. I just realized Hydrofenora fell down. I'll have to get that. But basically, um, I didn't even really know how to build this. I just kind of jerry-rigged it the way that I thought was simple for me. But uh, as you can see down below, you can see that that's the bottom of my siphon tube. And basically what I did is I just took a T and uh, plugged the one to the float switch in here and then I plugged this right here and this prevents my airline from kinking kind of like you see right here um, I was kind of worried over time that it would probably kink so uh, I decided to do that and another sweet thing is this is how I uh, prime the system just before um, I add it. So basically I'll come up in here, I'll add my scoops of uh, calc, I'll add my water, and then basically what I'll do is I'll pull the remnants of this out. I need to put a check valve on the end of it. It'll be even easier once it's check valved. But uh, basically what that'll do is it'll prevent me, it'll prevent the siphon from breaking. So basically um, I'll just suck on the end of this with the check valve, which will allow, allow water to come up to here and then drop down into here. Once that's done, the check valve seals this hole off and the siphon runs until it reaches the bottom. Um, pretty simple. Um, I know most of you guys aren't going to be able to do this because of uh, the way I have my tank set up on an arm wall, but... Uh, other than that, I know it's a little messy and stuff, guys, but, uh, you know, those are small problems. I mean, I can get an automatic top off and have that bucket down behind there if, uh, if it was that big of a deal. But uh, other than that, guys, 
as the system's doing really good. Um, I am getting ready to do a water test soon, so I'll have to do that. Um, I know I know you guys probably noticed that there's a few things that are switched around in here. Um, my neon green torch was over here. My hammer was over there. Unfortunately, my Galaxia, which is right there, was where this torch was. Ended up falling down and and landing down here, but my torch lost a head within one day. I was gone for two days, had to go do a job, and came back, and one of my torch's heads was missing. And I was freaking out, uh, didn't know what it was. Uh, some people thought it was brown jelly. Um, I thought it was the flow, but uh, I'm coming to find out that it was probably the Galaxia on its way down, uh, touched that head with its tentacles. Galaxia is very, very, very potent stuff. And uh, I was able to kill it in one shot. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, there was no uh, discharge of any type or anything. Um, no signs of parasites or anything. So, And it's also been a week since I've posted that. So I know that the torch recovered, but unfortunately I lost a head. But uh, other than that, guys, everything's doing really good. Um, polyp extension on my red planet is insane. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Unfortunately... Um, there's a lot of bubbles. I can see it perfect, but for some reason, you guys aren't going to be able to see it that well. But uh, Red Planet's doing really good, um, turning really red. Um, I did just add this coral in here, guys. This is one that I had in my hot tub. And uh, let's back out a little bit. I want to get a better view of this. And uh, I guess that's all the way zoomed out. I guess I'll have to pull the camera back. But I'm not sure what this is. Now, when I got it, I got it out of a 20-gallon deal that I bought. And there was only maybe just a few tentacles sticking out of this thing, and it's finally recovering. But it doesn't look like a frog spawn to me. Um, each tentacle probably has three or four more, uh, basically heads or whatever you call and I can't remember what you call this octaga or something like that but uh, I was wondering if anybody knows what this coral is compared to this one this is the one that I'm thinking is a hammer and uh, it's hard to say I mean you get you have these other polyps in here where's my finger at you have this polyp right here. I mean, look at that. It's got it's got the hammer shape right there, but then it's got two balls that come off of it. So if anybody knows what that is, let me know. Let me know if you guys think that it's related to this guy. Color differences are a little bit different. This was grown under halide, and so was this, but this has been under the LEDs for probably a good two weeks. So um, it'd be cool if this was a different coral, but I guess we'll have to see. Other than that, guys, I have just a few little frags down here. One neon green candy cane. <coughs> and two other candy canes, excuse me. And I went ahead and put in two cabbage corals from uh, my main system. And I'm just kind of seeing what they turn out under LED. I'm not a big fan of cabbage coral. I'll probably end up selling it anyway. But uh, it would be cool to get it really nice and colored up before I get rid of it. So we're going to see how that turns out. Um, I added another Pagoda Cup Coral. There's the original one. So uh, hopefully that, that guy will start looking pretty. Other than that guys, this system is doing really good. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm going to keep you guys updated. 
Still looking for a new tank for my Peninsula build. I'm really looking forward to shutting that hot tub down and basically starting fresh with a new tank that I can actually see through and utilizing that 33 gallon long as my future frag tank. I think that's plenty of room um, and if it's not I can always add more tanks down below. So happy reefing guys. Like my videos. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. Take care guys.